First reaction was cheers of joy. It's like we're getting Peyton Manning all over again. Big moves for a potentially even bigger payoff. We know he's capable of winning. Kind of brings that one thing we've been lacking in the quarterback position. The Broncos land Russell Wilson, and he's bringing Super Bowl aspirations with him from Seattle. It should be fun. It should be interesting to watch. Our Broncos insider breaks down the impact Wilson can have right away. Go! Walk! All right, glad you're with us tonight at 6 o'clock. I'm Shannon Ogden. And I'm Jessica Porter. We begin tonight with our Denver 7 weather action day. The snow headed our way over the next 24 hours. All right, Chief Meteorologist Mike Nelson joins us. Mike, it looks like those snow totals are... Uh, creeping up a little bit. A little bit. Right now, it's very nice out there with partly cloudy skies, a beautiful sunset. This will look a whole lot different 24 hours from now as the storm moves in. We are under winter weather advisories until 5 o'clock in the afternoon on Thursday as a strong cold front pushes southward across the state, much of Colorado, in a colorful manner now. Whether winter weather advisories, winter storm watch, fire eastern plains, or the winter storm warning over the northwest mountains. There's the cold front. It's moving our way and it's going to drop those temperatures significantly. Casper's right now at 15 degrees and we'll see readings drop into the single digits to near zero by Thursday morning. So here's the gist of it. Mountain snow tonight. We get snow by 9 a.m. tomorrow. By this time it'll be snowy and cold and bitter cold by Thursday morning. Thank you, Mike. Well, the Broncos have run the gamut of quarterback hopefuls over the past six years. None have been able to pick up where Peyton Manning left off. But that could all change this year with the addition of Russell Wilson from the Seattle Seahawks. Broncos insider Troy Rank looks at who the Broncos had to give up to land Wilson, but we start with Ivan Rodriguez with reaction from Broncos country. First reaction was cheers of joy. I know I got a little notification from Sports Center saying we made the trade and huge applause all around the office. Broncos fans are ready for what they believe could be a new chapter of success. He brings proven success of winning. Finally, someone who can actually lead the team. That is great news for a couple reasons. We really needed a veteran quarterback to come through here uh, because we've been trying to play that draft game for way too long and just striking out. And thank goodness Aaron Rodgers isn't coming here, man. As far as what Russell Wilson can bring to the Broncos, the possibilities are endless. He brings experience, he brings poise, and he's just a great figure. He's gonna, it's gonna be amazing here. Some fans even comparing this trade to when Peyton Manning arrived. I think this, without a doubt, is the biggest trade since Manning. I mean, obviously we gave up two first rounders, two second rounders, so huge, huge trade, but you know, upside is endless. It brings confidence, Russell, Russell Wilson has that mentality. I mean, he's always been a champion, he's really good. And, he knows the game. But even with all the hype, fans expect one thing, to win. And at the end of the day, he has to succeed at this point, that big of a trade, kind of settling, nothing less than a Super Bowl. Those are kind of expectations at this point. When we spoke with fans on the 16th Street Mall, like you saw, that they were so excited for the arrival of Russell Wilson and so optimistic for the new season on the way. We also popped into a sports fan store just to take a look inside and see what the environment was like. The manager there even told us that the, he had people coming in asking when they're going to start selling those Russell Wilson jerseys. Definitely a great time to be a Bronco fan. Live outside in Power Field, Ivan Rodriguez, Denver 7. Certainly good to be excited again. Ivan, thanks. Let's bring in our Broncos insider, Troy Rank. Uh, Broncos had to give up plenty to get Wilson. Yeah, listen, Shannon, are you going to complain if you give six flip phones for an iPhone or a VW or bus for a Ferrari? There's not a price that was not worth it for Russell Wilson, but it did sting a little bit in this regard. Two first round picks, one this year, one next. Two second round picks, one this year and one next year. Also a fifth rounder and Drew Locke, Shelby Harris and Noah Fant all go to Seattle in the trade. So eight components to the trade. The Broncos get Russell Wilson and a fourth round pick. But again, there is no price the Broncos wouldn't pay to get a franchise quarterback. You cannot win in this league if you don't have a top quarterback. The Broncos now have their guy. They were Eeyore, Shannon, for six years. Now they're caffeinated. It is a great day for Broncos country. It sure is. I'll give up all the flip phones in the world for this one. All right, Troy, nice work today. We appreciate it. And you can read Troy's full assessment of this big trade. It's up right now on the DenverChannel.com. 
Both lanes of E-470 remain closed tonight after a small plane crashed into the grassy median. This is along E-470 near Peoria, right by the Centennial Airport. Within the past 15 minutes, though, South Metro Fire tweeted these pictures showing the plane on a tow truck. They say the scene should be clear soon, and South Metro Fire says the plane was trying to land at the airport when it crashed. Two people on board made it out safely. A tiny home village in Denver is now on the move. New location will allow for more units and then therefore get more people off our streets and into shelter. Denver 7's Patrick Perez with the story tonight. After three years in Denver's Globeville neighborhood, this tiny home village is moving out. So our three year lease is up now on April 30th. The village off of 45th and Pearl has been home to 19 of these tiny homes, a community space and shared bathrooms. Currently we have around 13 residents, so around 10 households that will be moving over to the new site. You can see that new site right behind Dorothy Leva with the Colorado Village Collaborative. Located off of 42nd and Monroe in the Elyria Swansea neighborhood, the site will offer space to five additional homes for a total of 24. We've worked with a couple of community organizations within the Swansea neighborhood to make referrals directly to our tiny home units and we'll also be utilizing the uh, service providers that we currently use for referrals. In addition to everything else that's moving over, new and old residents will also have a new community garden on this half acre piece of land. The city is leasing the vacant site to the group for just 10 bucks a year. We're really excited about the 24 spaces that will be added at this site right now. Some nearby neighbors and business owners have already expressed concerns with what the group calls its unhoused individuals and they're working to address them all. I'm a Denver native and so it's important to me that the neighborhood is heard and that their concerns are validated. If all goes according to plan, move in is May 1st. Patrick Perez, Denver 7. There will be opportunities in the future for volunteers to help with the move, and we have a link to the group's website on the DenverChannel.com. The cities of Aurora and Denver are teaming up to get guns off the streets. City leaders are collaborating to host eight gun buyback events across the metro. You can anonymously drop your guns off in a drive through and then get a Visa gift card in return. The hope is to prevent guns from being stolen. So it's a gun storage issue, safe gun storage issue. Um, and if there are people who maybe have inherited a weapon from um, a spouse or a grandparent um, when they passed away, and they don't want it, but they don't know what to do with it, right? Maybe there are people who are parents whose kids are getting a little bit older. Um, they had weapons previously, um, but now feel very uncomfortable with the idea of them being in their home. The first gun buyback event will be in Lot J at Empower Field at Mile High on March 19th. A bill to create an office focused on missing and murdered indigenous people was introduced to the state capitol today. Now this office would be tasked with creating an alert system, training first responders on how to handle these cases and improve data tracking. Today is International Women's Day. It is a day dedicated to uplifting women and honoring their achievements. Today that was put on full display at a luncheon in Denver. Denver 7's Micah Smith introduces us to the women constructing a more inclusive future. Decades after Rosie the Riveter told female workers, we can do it. This group of women is saying, we can't do it without you. In high school, I was in a welding class, and I was the only girl for two years in that welding class. These women. And who would have thought? I know, right? It was destiny. Are telling the next generation of girls to put skilled trade at the top of their career possibilities list. Today, we are spreading awareness for women in construction. In honor of International Women's Day, Jasleen Aguilar, marketing coordinator for Murphy Company, a mechanical contractor helped organize a luncheon for Denver Metro women working in construction. We want ladies in schools as well as just choosing career paths in colleges to be aware that a career in construction is a choice. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, around 10% of those who work in the construction industry are women. That's about 1.1 million women compared to 10 million men. And on average, women in construction make $5,000 a year more than women working in non-construction related jobs. I am the director of well construction for Whiting Petroleum. One of the speakers for the event, Thornton Mayor Jan Coleman, has spent 23 years in the construction industry. I think the more diversity we have in any industry, the better ideas that we get. Coleman says she's happy to be a part of the effort to expose more young women to construction. I love the fact that my son sees me in this role and knows that I can do 
it and is proud of me. And I love that my daughter sees me and knows that she can do anything. Aguilar says for that teen who may also be the only girl in welding class, she wants them to know there's a big group of women ready to welcome them into this industry. Reporting in Thornton, Micah Smith, Denver 7. Certainly was a was not the welcome to Denver we were hoping for. This family's Colorado dream turns into a nightmare in just days. Drove down the street to get to the highway and the, just the trailer was gone at that point. Our Denver 7 Gibbs viewers were ready and willing to step in when they needed it most. I lost a lot and uh, it's amazing getting some of it back.